welcome to this special Halloween edition of Switch Obscuras, where we will be comparing a pair of slightly creepy puzzle platformers. Tandem, A Tale of Shadows, an indie release from Monochrome Paris just last week to all major platforms. And Little Nightmares 2, the prequel to the 2017 original that has been sitting in my backlog since its release earlier this year. Tandem is a puzzle-first experience where you control two characters from two different perspectives, using lighting and shadows as your main tool, taking place in a Tim Burton-inspired Victorian-era manner. Little Nightmares 2 is a bit more heavy on the horror aspect, taking place in dreamlike, surreal settings with intentionally scary and haunting set pieces. Both are great for any Halloween-inspired gaming, so let's take a deeper look and see how they play. In tandem, you play as Emma and a teddy bear named Fenton as you work your way through a Victorian-style mansion. There's a story as to why you are paired with a magic teddy bear, but being a puzzle game, it didn't really add anything for me other than the charming and more kid-friendly Halloween setting in which the game takes place. The true highlight to the entire game is the fact you play as Emma from a top-down perspective and Fenton from a side-scrolling perspective, but on the same level at the same time. You will alternate between characters whenever you'd like or when the puzzle calls for it by pressing one of the trigger buttons. The lighting on each level is often directly controlled by Emma, who creates shadows for Fenton, and those shadows Fenton are ab is able to run and jump on. In turn, this will allow Fenton to reach previous unattainable platforms that might open doors, distract enemies, or whatever the level calls for in order for Emma to keep going. This concept evolves as the game progresses, and this wonderfully original mechanic is something that holds up well throughout the five or so hour experience. So if you couldn't tell already, the creating platforms aspect for Fenton by using lighting from an entirely different perspective is pretty cool and inventive, and the game is at its best when this is the main puzzle mechanic versus some other uh, typical puzzle mechanic like a sequence order or timing based puzzle. Figuring out where Emma should stand so Fenton could make a jump just right was always a satisfying mechanic that never grew stale. Where the game does become somewhat of a mixed bag was during moments where I felt like I was opening doors, getting keys, and pressing buttons way too much. Those are common puzzle mechanics in a lot of different games and are not as interesting as the shadow-based puzzles. I think the game could have somehow sunk a little bit more into the platforming side of the equation to push the shadow concept even further. Because of this, I felt the puzzle solving falls just short of the greatness that the game aspires to be, but even so, it's still pretty good and it still carries that just one more level feeling, especially with how well the puzzles intertwine with the Victorian mansion theme and art style that surrounds the entire experience. So I never played the original Little Nightmares, and I apologize if I missed some concept of the story, but this game really just throws you into the mix without saying much, and I was fine with that. The game is mostly surreal stages anyway, so it's clearly more about how you feel when playing versus being told what's actually happening. You do play the game as a small child named Mana who gets teleported of sorts into this creepy universe through a television portal. The game then takes place in 2.5D levels, meaning you mostly move from left to right, but are also able to move front and back a bit, depending on the exact level. The game seamlessly takes place over several chapters as you run, jump, and try your best not to die. Because of the dreamlike settings, the genuinely creepy and haunting feeling I got when playing was perfect for the Halloween season knowing that one wrong move at any point could result in my sudden death. The gameplay was pretty basic with the element of surprise as its most often used tool. There are a couple small elements to the gameplay that may be a little distracting though. 
The first being, at times, I thought it was a bit hard to tell what I should and shouldn't interact with. Usually this left just one object or item that I could use on any given stage, which generally helped with the puzzle solving, but also gave me a little less freedom than what I initially expected. The biggest gripe with some players might be that the game is full of traps that are intentionally unfair by design. You see, this game wants you to be scared and wants you to die. You will learn to avoid traps and solve puzzles only after learning the hard way, again, by dying. I think this works just fine with the game as it's clearly part of all the haunting and on-edge atmosphere that it tries to create, but I understand it if some players get frustrated by this mechanic. Regardless, the highlight of the whole package is simply how you traverse these surreal nightmare settings and perfectly calls back to the name of the game. Uh, one aspect I appreciated in both games that I wanted to point out was the very, very forgiving save system. Whenever you die in either game, the reset point tends to be from just a few seconds earlier, or in Tandem's case, whenever you were last on a solid surface. This is particularly nice again in Tandem, since you may resort to trial and error at times when puzzle solving, and this helps encourage you to try things you might not normally would uh, if you had to replay significant parts of levels. It's also a really good benefit in Little Nightmares 2, but less because of the puzzle solving, and more so because of the booby trap inspired deaths. See, many deaths are not your fault whatsoever, even if you are super, super careful. There are a lot of stages that are intentionally set to kill you the first time, and again, getting to replay that immediately eliminates the frustration from the equation. Technically speaking, both games perform well enough to not impact your ability to play it. Again, I'm not someone to harp on frame rate or anything like that as long as it doesn't affect the game itself, so by that standard, both games easily pass that test. There were moments in each game where my character got stuck on a ledge or in an, an awkward spot, but again, resetting the game back just a few seconds means this was never a problem and happened so infrequently that it's barely worth mentioning. Tandem does have some issues with some rough voice acting, particularly with Emma, and some considerable stuttering during any of the cutscenes. Does it affect gameplay? No, but it is something you'll notice and it can feel a bit out of place and jarring when the rest of the game performs much better. This kitchen is full of food. Someone lives here for sure. Visually, Little Nightmares 2 comes on a bit stronger due to its game design. See, in Little Nightmares, many stages are choreographed in the sense that the game knows exactly when to zoom in, turn up the volume, or time it with something happening on screen. Because Tandem is completely focused on the puzzle solving and freedom of the player, there is less that the game can control, so there is more that can potentially happen during any level that can affect the technical performance and ultimately feel just a step or two less smooth than in Little Nightmares. The one major area where I think both games kind of miss the mark is by not including some form of co-op multiplayer, local or otherwise. Both games have that dual player puzzle aspect to them, one where you are in control of, like in tandem, and another that is simply a helpful AI, like in Little Nightmares 2. Either way, I think having the ability to control the second character with a second player would have been a nice inclusion, especially when the bones for that gameplay are already basically built into the experience already. I also think enjoying spooky games or scary games in general with a friend really can add to the experience, like when watching a scary movie with your friends versus yourself. Now, you could kind of get around this by passing the controller around, but that kind of breaks the game immersion, and is definitely something you could try if you want to have a pseudo co-op experience. In the end, both Tandem, A Tale of Shadows, and Little Nightmares 2 land somewhere between good and great. 
Both offer unique five or so hour, probably one and done experiences in the puzzle platforming genre, just in different ways. Tandem truly has one of the more original gameplay mechanics out there, especially for a puzzle predominant game, even if the execution of it isn't perfect all the time, and again can be a bit rougher around the edges. Still, there are way more good things to say about the experience than not, especially coming from a small studio, and I fully recommend it. Little Nightmares 2 is also a really good game. It's more polished than Tandem and had some better gaming moments, but that's to be expected for a larger budget and having a previous game in the series to work out all the kinks. Not everyone will necessarily like the trial and error aspect to the gameplay in Little Nightmares, but it does create a ton of on-edge moments that are reminiscent of a well-made and perfectly tense scary movie. Speaking of which, both these games succeed in creating a Halloween-inspired atmosphere, so definitely make them a part of your October gaming festivities. Thanks everyone for watching this special edition of Switch Obscura. If any of you pick up Tandem A Tale of Shadows or Little Nightmares 2, let me know in the comments, let me know what you think. And uh, subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this one. Enjoy Halloween everyone, and happy gaming!